Hi, I'm Alvin from One More Week To Go. You're joining me here today at London Heathrow's Terminal 5. In a few hours, I'm going to be boarding my flight back home to Vancouver. For today's flight, I'm going to be flying with British Airways on their Boeing 777-200 in business class on their Club World Suites. Now it has been a few years since I've flown with British Airways. The last time was back in 2014 on board the Queen of the Skies Boeing 747. So obviously a lot has changed since then with British Airways, especially due to the pandemic. So I'm super excited to get on board and see what British Airways has to offer in 2022. After arriving on a flight from Paris in the morning, we had a good five hours to spend at London Heathrow Airport before our late afternoon flight to Vancouver. Naturally, we spent a good chunk of that time doing some plane spotting from the Terminal 5 buildings. The full-sized windows provided some great unobstructed views onto the gates and surrounding apron. After completing a round of spotting, we visited British Airways Galleries Lounge, located on the upper level of the Terminal 5B building. Note that 5A and 5C have their own lounges as well, I just found that the 5B lounge was a lot quieter at the time. The lounge itself looked pretty dated. The colors of the furnishings were rather dull and some of the armchairs had some pretty questionable upholstery. With that said, there was an abundance of socially distanced seating, most with power outlets and USB ports within reach. There was a wide selection of beverages, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Unfortunately, there was no buffet or self-serve food available, most likely as a response to COVID. But each table has a QR code you can scan to order some snacks and light meals. The code of the day, which in this case was our final destination of Vancouver, is used both for the Wi-Fi as well as for ordering food through your phone. I did order a few items from the menu, such as this egg sandwich that came with a side of crisps, as well as a banana bread loaf. All I can say is that it tasted as good as it looks. Thankfully, I wasn't too hungry. The lounge did offer some great views out into the apron, allowing us to watch as our plane was towed to the gate in preparation for our flight. Parked close by was the 777 with the special Shanghai livery, but sadly we were not lucky enough to get this plane for our flight. When it was time to head to the gate, we took the People Mover, a convenient train that connects the three Terminal 5 buildings, 5A, 5B, and 5C. Within a few minutes, we were in the correct building, heading towards our gate. Taking us to Vancouver today is this Boeing 777-200ER. If we had taken this flight a day earlier, we would have been on a brand new A350. But as luck would have it, the Vancouver route got downgraded to this 777 starting the day of our flight. I was really hoping to fly on the A350, but as you'll see later in the video, the interior of the 777 was not too shabby either. After a 20 minute delay, boarding finally began. Following a sizable chunk of elite priority passengers in Group 1, regular business class passengers were allowed to board as part of Group 2. Sadly, no view of our plane from this glass jet bridge, just views of the typical British weather. Hi. Hi. Welcome Thank to the USF 6A. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This particular 777-200 is retrofitted with British Airways' latest and greatest Club World Suites with 11 rows spread out over two cabins in a 1 to 1 reverse herringbone configuration these suites represent british airways reimagined flagship product and they sure are stunning 
The darker color palette of the seats, accented by silver trim and wood finishings, gives the cabin a subdued yet sleek and modern atmosphere, especially when basked with the cool blue mood lighting. I haven't had the chance to fly in British Airways' old Club World seats, but judging from reviews and pictures I've seen online, I can already tell that this is a vast improvement over the old product. Most notably, every seat now comes with direct aisle access, as well as a privacy door. Before we get going, let's do a comprehensive seat tour. Directly in front of you is the 17-inch touchscreen TV. We'll browse through the IFE later in the video. Underneath, you'll find the footrests and a ton of legroom. There is some storage below the footrest for shoes, or in this case, the British Airways bedding fits conveniently in there as well. The duvet is provided by the White Company. We'll try it out later in the flight. Over to the side beneath the side table is another storage area that conveniently fits my sling bag. You'll find the safety card and sickness bag there as well. Coming back up, you'll find the tray table accessible from beneath the screen, which you can extend by pulling on this latch here. The table can lock in several positions, and can also fold out for meal service. The table is very sturdy and has a ton of surface area. I personally love this type of tray table design. It's easy to extend and stow and super functional. Coming to the first of many storage compartments on the side table, it opens up at the press of this button to reveal a large area for personal belongings. You can see my phone in there for scale. In here you'll find a headphone jack, USB power port, the IFE remote controller, another USB power port, and the universal power outlet. Here are the seat controls, presented both as physical buttons for easy presets, or if you wish to set the recline and pitch independently, you can use the touchscreen display. You can also operate the overhead light from here. Further back on the side table, you'll find the second, smaller storage compartment. This one is suitable for smaller personal items or your phone. At the back of the table is the third and final storage compartment which opens to reveal a vanity mirror, as well as the headphones. This particular compartment felt a bit awkward being so shallow, so I really just used it to store the menu. You'll find an LED reading light at the usual spot. The seat itself has some nice padding and feels very comfortable. There is a large pillow provided. Note that this seat uses a three-point seat belt similar to a car. The shoulder strap is required during takeoff and landing. The armrest by the aisle can be extended or stowed by pushing on the latch at the front. Last but not least, you have the privacy door. This door is locked during takeoff, so I'll show this part a bit later in the flight. Unfortunately, no individual adjustable air nozzles, but thankfully the cabin was a pretty comfortable temperature throughout the flight. First officer, it's my pleasure to be flying us to Vancouver today. Uh, thanks for getting it properly, we're just underway now. Um, we'll be going very soon. Couple of introductions. First of all, um, with me on the flight deck is Captain Toby Joyner, Senior First Officer Alex and in charge of what appears to be a different light for the cabin crew is Nicola Hale. I know Nicola and her crew will do their utmost to give you the most comfortable and enjoyable flight you've had for uh, some time.
For today's flight, we'll be flying northwest, past Iceland, Greenland, then down through the frozen landscapes of Canada, through the provinces of Saskatchewan and Alberta, before touching down in Vancouver, for a total flight time of just over 9 hours. The interface of the IFE was functional and pretty easy to navigate. There was a bit of touch delay, but not the worst that I've seen. There are plenty of Western and international entertainment options to keep everyone happy. The amenity kit provided by the White Company comes as a black leather pouch. Inside you'll find a sleeping mask, socks, a miniature set of hand lotion, lip balm and essential oil, dental kit, a pen, and earplugs. Here are the headphones provided by British Airways. Not sure what brand they are, but they worked well and I didn't find any issues with them, and they fit on my head pretty comfortably. The crew came around shortly after takeoff to deliver drinks which we had ordered prior to departure. I ordered one of the mocktails, the Fizzberry, which was a refreshing mix of cranberry juice and tonic water. This came with a pack of nuts as well. So I just wanted to give some first impressions of this seat, uh, of this British Airways Club World Suite. What I can say is that I am absolutely in love with this seat. Uh, there's so many good things that I love about it. First of all, you have a ton of storage space. So you got like three different storage compartments here, different sizes that accommodate all your personal items. The seat itself is spacious and a ton of leg room. I don't know if you can see it if I show you here, but there's just so much space in the footrest area. And I can't even reach it right now. Uh, I'm 5'7". Even if I put it into the bed mode later, uh, I'm pretty sure I'll have a ton of leg, leg room to, to move around. The seat itself is actually really comfortable. Like, uh, I put it into recline mode a bit earlier, and it's just really comfortable. And finally, I love the privacy of this seat. You have really tall barriers that pretty much block the view of anyone else on this flight. So. From where I'm sitting, you can't see anyone else in this cabin. Um, and obviously with the sliding door, which uh, I think they will unlock a bit later in the flight after the meal service, once you close it, you have your own little enclosed little area, like your own private room. And that's really cool to see in this reverse herringbone configuration. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm loving this seat so far. It's probably one of my favorite reverse herringbone seats um, that I've ever flown in. And, I think British Airways did a really great job with the seat. Well done. Okay, so they actually just went through the cabin and unlocked the door. So now I can actually close this door. I think it doesn't go all the way. There's a little bit of a gap, but pretty much I'm in my own little space. Extreme privacy in this kind of seat, which is amazing. Here's another look from my perspective with the privacy door fully extended. As you can see, there is a slight gap, but it's not a big deal and still provides the intended effect. With meal service about to begin, let's take a look at the menu. As always, feel free to pause the video if you want to read it in more detail. Thank you. There you go. Awesome. And with us, it's citrus best, definitely. Great, thank you so much. Thanks. The meal arrived all on one tray, which arguably you can say is not a very premium experience, but honestly, I didn't mind it at all. 
For starters, there is a light dish featuring roasted cauliflower and red pepper dip. For the main, I went for the slow roasted short rib of British beef which was absolutely incredible. The beef was soft and cooked just right. Probably one of the better beef dishes I've had on a plane. It's served with some beef fat roasted potatoes, vegetables, and Yorkshire pudding. You also get a selection of bread. For dessert, we had a selection of cheese and chocolate mousse crumble, both of which were top notch. For the drink, I sampled the other mocktail British Airways offers, the Citrus Burst, which was a mix of orange juice and tonic water. The quality of the food really impressed me, and I'm not exaggerating when I say I'm actually getting a bit hungry just editing this footage. Finally, to cap off the meal, I asked for a coffee as I normally do. Following the meal service, I find that it's usually about time to pay a visit to the laboratories. What you'll find inside is a pretty standard laboratory offering with a few amenities to choose from, again provided by the White Company. It was a pretty standard size as well. Most importantly, however, the washroom was very clean, which is really all I can ask for. British Airways offers different Wi-Fi packages depending on what speeds and duration you require. For the messaging packages, which presumably are slower speeds, you can either pay £3 for an hour or £5 for the entire flight. Alternatively, for faster speeds in the browse and stream packages, they range from £5 for an hour up to £18 for the entire flight. I didn't purchase it to try it out as I mostly wanted to get some sleep on the flight, so I can't comment on the speed or coverage. We went through some pretty rough turbulence at one point in the flight. Thankfully, this was after the meal service. The camera doesn't really capture the shaking that well, but maybe you can tell how turbulent it was from the way my body is being tossed around. At this point in the flight, I was pretty sleepy since I had an early morning flight from Paris to London, so I decided to set up my bed and try out the bedding provided by the White Company. A thinner white piece is provided to cover the seat, which is a nice touch. Sometimes the seat material can be a bit scratchy when you're sleeping. The thicker duvet was also very comfortable and breathable, not overly hot when used. In the fully flat position, as expected, there is still a ton of room to move around and adjust your sleeping position. A lot of room around the head area as well. Here is where the door really makes a big difference to provide the ultimate privacy and separate yourself from the traffic in the alley. Safe to say, I had the most comfortable sleep on an airplane in a long time. After waking up from a very refreshing sleep, I was treated to an inspiring frozen landscape over northern Canada and a surreal gradient of pink and purple hues in the sky.
About an hour and a half before arrival into Vancouver, I was offered a choice of sausage roll or panini for the arrival meal. Of course, I went for the sausage roll given that I was flying a British airline. This was served alongside a bag of crisps, carrot cake, and another fizzberry mocktail because I enjoyed the first one so much. A nice light meal to round off the food consumption on the flight. A bit of weather information for you. It's uh, 11 degrees Celsius, which is 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, for those of you that want to reset your watches now, the local time is 35, uh, 37 minutes past 6. As expected, it was fully dark for our landing into Vancouver, but hopefully you'll enjoy some of the city lights as we make our way into YVR. So, what is the verdict? I'll be honest, coming into this flight, I wasn't quite sure what to expect and had reserved expectations. But it's safe to say that British Airways really blew me away. The crew were great, with friendly attitudes, and always asked if I wanted more drinks or needed anything else. But what really exceeded my expectations was the comfort and privacy of the seat, as well as the food. Out of the four flights I took on this trip, between Lufthansa, Etihad, Air France and British Airways, this British Airways flight was easily my favorite. And that's a wrap on another trip report. To returning subscribers, thank you so much for your unwavering support. If you're new here, I hope you enjoyed the video and will consider subscribing to the channel. And with that, thanks for watching, happy travels, and I'll see you in the next one.